And if you look at the evidence in terms of cognitive deficits in patients with concussion, they're mainly attention. So it's uh, attention, concentration, which is sort of sustained attention, uh, working memory. Working memory is like, you know, I'm trying to remember some numbers and then recall them later on. It requires attention as well. Um, not to say that there are other cognitive deficits involved, uh, but it really was central, and a lot of people have reported this, that attention seems to be a central cognitive deficit in people with concussion. So then you look at that, then you say, the next question is, well, what is attention? And attention means a lot of different things to different people. I mean, obviously, arousal, you have to be awake to pay attention. You have to select something in the environment that you want to pay attention to. You have to process it, sustain your attention, not be distractible. All those things are sort of wrapped up into this, this uh, definition we call or, uh, called attention. Um, but I was particularly interested in the patients that I saw. They seemed to be um, out of sync. And what, that, what does that mean? So you start looking at, uh, really, why do you need a brain? I mean, you need a brain because you want to interact with the outside world. So if you want to interact with the outside world, there's a couple of things going on. One is the outside world is changing. It's dynamic. And the brain takes time to process information. You put those two together, and you've got a brain that's out of sync. Because when, by the time, say, you're playing tennis, by the time you see where the ball is, and you say, OK, I see it there, and I'm going to take a swing of my racket and hit it, the ball's gone. You have to start swinging your racket before the ball reaches there. It's the same thing with the brain. The brain has got to predict or time things before they actually occur. So when you're paying attention to something, you want to select something from the environment, you want to know what it is, where it's going to be, and when it's going to occur. And that when part is very difficult. And we do it unconsciously. We learn, you know, that somebody's speaking, the cadence of their voice, when the next word's going to come in, and we learn how to predict uh, speech, and we can process it in synchronization. Um, and so the hypothesis was that there is, that people with traumatic brain injury uh, have a break in that circuit, and they can't, and they call the attention circuit, and they can't uh, synchronize as well. So they're sort of out, of out of time, out of step. And this is sort of what I saw clinically. One, one way of looking at this is, is a helicopter flying across the sky. So I've got to, I've got to predict how, what the trajectory of that helicopter is and when it's going to be at a certain place. So my eyes track it. And it tracks it in such a way that the helicopter remains stationary on my retina. Okay? And then I can process the information. I can see whether it's a helicopter or a bird. If I'm unable to predict the trajectory and, and the velocity of that helicopter, it becomes a blur. And what happens in terms of whether I know it's a helicopter or a bird? Sometimes I know I can see it. Sometimes I can't. And what, what comes out of that is variability. And if you look at people with concussion, and there's been a lot of research on this, their reaction times are not just slow, they're actually variable. So there's this variability or this tremor in cognitive processes that's a result of, of predictive timing being off. Whereas people with traumatic brain injury seem to have a deficit that comes and goes, it seems to be variable. And so the hypothesis is that attention is a process to reduce performance variability. And it does that through predictive timing. So when you're interacting with the outside world, you've got to predict things correctly. If you do that correctly, your performance then is spot on. If you don't, your performance is variable. And that's what we see in traumatic brain injury patients.